Anna, they're over at Dante's condo. Now, that's a whole nother story also, because when the police came in cracking, Blanca seen Tariq on the footage, but they never followed that up. Monet uh, allegedly unallowed. I can't confirm or deny that because, you know, saying we don't do none of that talking around here. But anyway, Dante is missing. He dead. And Drew and Diana are living over there. Monet, Texas. Drew, 911, get your ass over here. Kane. Get your old ass out of the fucking dorms, nigga. You supposed to be a dope boy. Get out of there and get to the house. Now, once they get here, there's one thing we always learned about the Tejadas. Never trust a Tejada. No matter what they do, what they say, or how they say it, never, ever trust a Tejada. Secondly, stay away from from the Tejada kitchen slash dining room. Those are really your main two rules. Monet calls a meeting. And the reason Monet calls this meeting, <laughs> hey, DJ, uh, I forgot. I, damn, who said that? Someone did say, don't end the episode with Monet screaming. And sure enough, we ended it with Monet. Ah, ah. But anyway, Monet calls a meeting. The reason Monet calls a meeting is because what I've been saying since season one, if you've been rocking with me since season one, what have I always told you? The Tejadas were never like that. The Tejadas was small time. She's upset that Noma, her boss, texted her and said, don't bring your shot up ass to work. Now, I've been telling y'all for years, since 2020, the Tejadas ain't like that. Remember when she went on that helicopter ride and I was telling y'all, you know she ain't got no money. All the drug dealers in New York City that been on a helicopter ride. Monet, 35, 40. No, she not 35 because that means she had the kids like she was like 12, 13. Monet about 40, 42 years old, 44, 45 at the oldest. She never been on a helicopter ride. Remember she was up there with Dante? Oh, this is nice. That right there, I knew they wasn't getting money like that. I knew they only had a million dollars saved up and that million was sitting in the safe. Lorenzo had been in jail for like 10 years and they still had that million dollars. So they ain't getting money like that. They live in check to check. So when you hear these people, these dope boys, they got these big ass chains and nice cars. They still live in check to check. So don't be confused or fooled by these niggas. But I always knew the Tejadas were never big time. But listen, <clears throat> when your boss, when your boss texts you and tell you not to come into work, For me, it's different. I'm only working so I can get my SOFA agreement so I can stay in Europe. I don't need to work. <clears throat> what happened on Everybody Hates Chris? She used to say, I don't need to work. Julie has got two jobs. Now, I don't make that much on YouTube. Support the channel. Cash app is pinned in the chat. But I got a little bit of real estate. You know what I'm saying? I got other money coming in, so I don't need to work. I only work so I can stay in Europe. That's why my job, I, I just be there. But when your boss texts you, hey, don't come into work tomorrow, you're like, what? I need this money. Rent due. That million dollars that they had, remember, the Tejadas, they're sitting on a goose egg right now. Remember, the Tejadas have zero dollars right now. Does anyone remember why the Tejadas have zero dollars and they're living check to check? They're living brick to brick? Someone tell me why the Tejadas ain't got no money right now. Tasha never been on a, you said Tasha never been on a helicopter. James St. Patrick owned a nightclub. Let's not forget, let's not forget the Tejadas are well beneath the St. Patrick's. The St. Patrick's were on a whole nother level. Like, let, hey, let's not forget where the St. Patrick's were now. Now, we know James is different. But let's not be confused. James St. Patrick had that bag. That nigga had a nightclub. Let's not get it confused. James St. Patrick was 10 levels above the Tejadas. James St. Patrick wouldn't know what a Tejada was. He would think that is a goddamn meal from Taco Bell. Let me get the uh, chicken Tejada with a, uh, a Arctic Blast. Like, the, James wouldn't know what the fuck a Tejada is. Nope. The Tejadas don't have any money 
because Mo, uh, Diana spent the million dollars to get Lorenzo out of jail. Y'all forgot that? Diana spent the million dollars to get Lorenzo out. The only money they had saved was the money Lorenzo put up before he went to jail. The million dollars in the save Diana took out to get Lorenzo out. Tejadas are living check to check, brick to brick. Come on. It's me. It's me. You know what I mean? A lot of people think I'm just an ignorant Negro, which I am most of the time, belligerent. But the Tejadas are broke because Diana spent the million dollars to get Lorenzo out of jail. That's why they got to work. And Monet is upset because what happened? Noma Texture says, stay your weak ass at the house. So now Monet's talking about, y'all know anything about this? You know anything about this? Everybody looking around like, Monet, what the fuck are you talking about? Noma texted me and told me I need to stay home. Whole time. We don't know what's going on with Janet. This Monet story is getting interesting right here. It's heating up because Janet is still around. Janet got a weird case. Why is she around? Excuse me. At this point, Monet is just, she's upset. She's using emotion. This is why Lorenzo didn't want her running the organization. You remember? Look at what's going on right now. Last week, me and Brillo were up here and we were talking about the relationship between uh, Lorenzo and Monet. And he was like, man, Monet's just trying to boss up. She's trying to move through. No, Monet's moving off emotion. Monet got Kane involved. Monet got two bricks that we don't know how we're going to pay back. Now Monet is running her mouth in front of Janet. We don't know what the fuck Janet got going on. Janet just popped up out of nowhere. Now Janet is listening to everything. She heard the name Noma. She heard about getting back in the dope game. She was also at the dinner table. I know we jumping ahead with that, but we need to backtrack to where we are right now. Janet is hearing everything. Last week, Kane was the smart one to tell Janet to leave the room. Monet don't give a fuck right now because Monet is jealous of what Noma got going on and her boys working with Noma and actually making some money. So at this point, Monet has no control over the Tejada family. Monet wants to know who shot her, but at the same time, Monet wants to be Noma. Not saying that she wants to like take Noma's spot, but she wants to be that top dog. This was always her aspirations. That's why she was moving too fast back in the 90s when she got those two bricks that we don't know how we're going to pay off. See, it's always going to make sense. Monet is the reason for the Tejada family to be this dysfunctional. Lorenzo was slow playing it, but when you're in the dope game, you got it. it's better to slow play it than move fast and get your head chopped off. So let's go ahead and bring it to where we are right now. Drew and Kane are both getting text messages from Noma. Monet is going off. Hey, what we got going on? What we got going on? The boys, they leave. She looking at Diana, and I'm looking at Diana, too, and I'm thinking. I'm looking at Diana like, you going to school in that net? That crochet short and top. If you want me to be the pappy, I'll be the pappy for the evening. Yeah, if you want me to be the pappy, I'll be the. Yeah, Diane, I think me and you, like, I don't care whose kid it is, you know, I'm going to be there for you and the baby. If you need me to. Monet losing it. What the fuck is this? No one texted me and told me not to come to work. Y'all know about this? Man, listen. If you know Mo, I'm not talking to, I don't never talk to the boss. Unless it's, hey, can I take this weekend and all? I don't talk to the supervisor, the boss for nothing. There's no reason for me to be, listen, it's supervisor. Nigga, unless I need to be supervised, I don't need to talk to you. I don't want to be involved with you. I don't do fake laughing. If you making jokes, if the shit ain't funny, I ain't laughing. I don't do none of that shit. I'm here for my check and that's it. But Monet is upset. Jen is listening to everything. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. Hit that like button. Hey, Ghost is the best spinoff. Regardless of what you think about Monet, I like Monet's character. And I always said I like Monet's character. Now, 
she always put her kids in the worst predicaments. But I always like Monet's character. I know people be saying that the 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 the, the acting is a little shaky, but I like this character because it's showing like, hey, Monet don't give a fuck about none of that. Monet just wants to be in the dope game. So Monet's going off because she got fired on her day off. When's the next time we see? Oh, okay, we get the flashback. All right, so Monet's in the room, right? Monet got fresh as hell. Look, one thing we know about Monet, Monet gonna be the flyest individual. Her and Raquel, we got them competing. Let me let's just be real. Monet and Raquel in the power universe, oh, they they are leagues leagues ahead of where Tasha St. Patrick is. Monet is, is Auntie Mo and motherfucking Grandma Rock. They way the wardrobe is stepping, stepping on what Tasha St. Patrick. Well, I mean, in all fairness, Tasha St. Patrick was the originator. You know what I'm saying? So that's like 14 to what, 20? So you know what I'm saying? Wardrobes ain't as crazy as they are now. Now they're going above and beyond. But Monet and Raquel, they stepping those shit. One thing we know about Monet, she gonna get flies a motherfucker. Monet put this shit on, didn't she? What, what kind of belt is this? Monet got dressed. She thinking she about to go to work. She about to go in there big step. She gonna go in there to the meetings. All right, Noma, how many bricks we got coming in today? Okay, look. Um, I want Kane to get Kane. You guys got uh just crossed the hundred and tenth street. You got hundred and tenth street to one hundred and thirty first. Drew, I want you to take one hundred and thirty six up to one forty eighth. Diana, I want you on Stansfield with the bricks. Monet got fly as hell because she thought she was about to go to work. She thought she was about to go to work. Monet sent that text message: "Sit your five dollar ass down before Mo make change." So now she in the room upset. You know, when you get fly, your homeboy hits you up. Hey, Mo, we about to come slide. We're going to come pick you up in like an hour. An hour would not pass. I didn't got fresh. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting in the house. I'm chilling. I'm waiting on my homeboys to come and pick me up because it ain't my week to drive. These niggas taking forever. Why? Because they didn't probably picked up some drove. They didn't probably went to the liquor store. They tricking off. They hollering at some hoes or whatever. So I'm at the house. Now I'm on the bed and just my, you know what I'm saying, my pants and my wife beater because I can't put my shirt on until it's time to leave because I'd be sweating. So I'm laying, I'm laying on the bed, fresh as hell, just waiting on him. Monet, mad as a motherfucker, text message said, you can't bring your ass to work. Monet upstairs, like, hmm, hmm, mad as a motherfucker. Diana talking about, I got to go to school, ma. Here's your pills. Now, after episode two, we know that those pills, we can't trust her to hide a kid. Remember, Monet was downstairs and she heard Diana and Drew. And Diana was saying, we're battling this. Now, we know what's going on behind the scenes with you and Diana, but this is Monet's story, so we can't talk from that perspective because we don't know what the fuck is going on. So Diana comes up to the room, and Diana's like, here you go, your pills, Ma. I got to go to class. Diana got her ass out. Now, you know, her body, her choice. You know, we ain't judging nobody. I liked what I seen, but I don't, I don't know that Diana's pregnant at the moment. But I'm looking at Diana. I'm like, this is what you going to school in? You showing ass? Hey, we, we, we ain't judging. We like what we see. Hey, my bad for looking, you know, saying, hey, hey, you're a creep, man. Why are you looking at me? Just because I dress this way don't mean you can look at me. My bad. I ain't I ain't looking. I ain't looking, Diana. I didn't know that your cheeks was out. I didn't know. I'm a respectable gentleman. So she's sitting on the bed. She said, hey, real quick, Diana, what you, what you know about uh, Kate Egan? Ma, who, who, who is Kate Egan? Who, who's Kate Egan? Yeah. What up, Jacoby? Huh. You don't know Kate Egan? And then we see this. Hey, I got your nose. Hey, I got your nose. I don't know why kids fall for that. So, like, you know. People say, hey, you can't call kids stupid or dumb. But if I tell a kid, hey, I got your nose and do this, and they think that this is their nose, that's pretty stupid. Hey, I got your nose. So Diana's fidgeting. And we're like, what the hell? Why are they zooming in on this? But then we get a flashback. 
Now, this flashback is going to give us all the information we need to know. Monet's like, oh, so you don't know about Kate, huh? Okay. We get a flashback. Monet is over here bagging things up. Now, remember, she got two bricks. We don't know where these two bricks came from. We don't know how she got these two bricks, but she got two bricks. And it's overwhelming. Now, remember, last week they were telling me, oh, Mo, Monet is bossing up. She's the one that really put Lorenzo in the game. She's taking it to another level. Well, sure enough, one week later, we see that Monet ain't even capable of actually moving two bricks on her own. Monet is putting her kid's life in jeopardy by letting them sack up the bricks. One week later, look look at how the whole dynamic changed. Last week it went from Monet's trying to get them out the gutter to now Monet is sacrificing all of the kids. Now, this is a little time jump because Drew and Diana are about five, six years old. Well, I'd probably say like seven. Well, no, I don't know, man. These kids look kind of, I don't know. How old do you think these kids are? What's this, like a, like a six and seven maybe? Five, six maybe? How old do you think these kids are? Because they in here, look, look at Monet. Look how Monet's looking at Drew. She's like, damn, son, you a pro at this. Young Monet, this is a good, this is good ass casting right here. I got to give him credit. Young Monet, this is perfect casting. I haven't seen them show a younger person that looks more like the character. This is great. I need to find out who this young lady's name is. If anyone can find me, if anyone can find me Young Monet's name, we got to look her Instagram. We got to follow. We need to get Young Monet. That's who we need to interview, Young Monet. That's who we need to interview, Young Monet. Yeah, Ju Young Jukebox looks good, too. Young Jukebox looks like the older Jukebox also. But this Young Monet, I like, I like this character. Yeah, they did have Cassidy playing. Cassidy definitely wasn't out then, back then. But Monet's looking at the kids. And the reason this flashback comes is, one, to show us what Monet was going through with the kids. Because last week, last week we also seen Monet apologizing in, uh, to Drew about everything that she put him through. So now when we see her apologizing, she's apologizing for making Drew put in that work. She's apologizing for making Diana put in that work. But we're seeing... Monet individually with each one of the kids and what they went through dealing with Monet as they were growing up. So this is a good, you know what I'm saying? This is a good perspective in a flashback so we can get the overview of what Monet was actually doing with the kids as they grew up and why she treats them the way they were. Remember, Drew was drawing. Drew wanted to go to school to do some drawings. Remember in like season one, season two, Drew was an artist. But Monet pulled him away from that because she had aspirations and dreams of them, you know, saying supporting Zeke. Drew used to draw. We ain't seen Drew draw in a while. But she told him, put that shit down. Come over here, get in the game. Get in the game. 10 years old. Yeah, this is this is what 10-year-olds look like. Uh, I could probably see that 10. I was thinking more like like eight and seven, maybe. Because remember, Drew and Diana are only like a year apart. Drew and Kane are like two years, and then Kane and Zeke are one year. Damn, Monet was putting them things out back to back, wasn't she? As soon as the six week was up, she, Monet was getting to it. Nine and ten? All right, fuck it. We'll just make it nine and ten to make it even. Yeah, It's easy to remember nine and ten. All right, bet. So this flashback is not only to show us what was going on, but we see young Diana. She said, you guys got to protect this house. If anyone asks you what you're doing, Drew, what were you doing? I was watching cartoons and, and I was drawing this weekend and I was eating a uh, motherfucking uh, ham sandwich and, and watching um, Ninja Turtle uh, and, and, and my mama said, I can't watch Ninja Turtles all day. I gotta uh I gotta eat. So I had I stopped to eat and I, uh she made she made grilled cheese and, I, and and then I go to my coloring book. So Drew got his lie. Now it's up to Diana. 
Now, Diana ain't that good at lying. She don't want to do no lie. Diana, what were you doing? Uh, I was, I, I was, I, I was playing with, I, I, I was playing with my toys this weekend. That's good. That's good. So they showed the little hand of Diana fidgeting. I, I was playing with my, uh, to, I was playing with to, to, to toys this weekend. So Monet knows that Diana is lying about something and she's asking about Kate Egan. We've been wondering about this footage. We know that her and Tariq met up with Pinky, but Pinky couldn't gather any information at this point. So now we see the hand from young Diana fidgeting, lying about playing with toys instead of sacking up that dope to older Diana lying about Kate Egan and giving up the address. So Monet is peeping it. And Diana talking, I'm about to go to school, Mom. I'll be back. So Monet, whenever your mama look at you side eye like this, you just know that they know that you bullshit. From there, when's the next time we see Monet? Mm. Y'all was wondering why they're canceling ghosts? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> the budget. They got a $30,000 Louis V mink sweater. This, this is what Monet and them is spending their money on. A $30,000 mink Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Let me see. Mink. Louis Monet said this coat was 30 bands. Now, I'm not sure. I'm trying to find it right now. I should have been looking it up earlier, but I'm trying to find a mink Louis Vuitton jacket. Or no, it ain't no jacket. This is a motherfucking coat. Coat. She said this is 30,000 and it's me. Now, for I'm going to be honest with you. Why the fuck is Janet in her closet? Someone explain to me what Monet is doing right now. Imagine you came home and your cousin that you ain't seen in years is in your closet. What is Monet doing right now? We've been studying body language for the last three years. What is Monet doing right now? Someone tell me, what, what, what is Monet doing right now? What is Monet? doing right now you come in your house if someone's in your thirty thousand dollar mink hands on hips she confused what i'm about to say this is going to be the most respectful way that i can say it but 
I, I think you all would agree with me when I say this. It's like it's no disrespect or anything. No disrespect or anything. Bitch, what are you doing in my motherfucking meek? <laughs> if you don't get your funky ass out of my motherfucking $30,000 meek, what the fuck are you doing in my room, in my goddamn meek? Get the fuck out my shit. Nigga, I wish I would come home and a nigga in my motherfucking... I come home, my brother in my goddamn... I got a meek coat upstairs I had to spend. Let's just say I ain't spending no $30,000. Hell, I ain't even spending ten thousand on a coat. I'm not even spending five thousand on a coat. The most I spend on like a coat is maybe five hundred, six hundred dollars, and even that's pushing it. I'm gonna wait till Burlington Coat Factory get that bitch on sale for goddamn seventy nine ninety five. I'd be damned if I'm about to spend three. If I spend anything over two hundred dollars on a coat, I'm wearing that motherfucker every single day in the winter time. With a thirty thousand dollar mink that you only gonna wear like once or twice. Nigga, please. She in here. Wee. Wee. $30,000 me over here on Snapchat, on Instagram. Like, uh, bitch, if you don't get your ass about that mink, when you wear a mink, a $30,000 coat, you don't do a lot of moving. You don't want to sweat. You don't want to, like, Break up the leather that's on the inside, the insulation, and everything. This is me. This is 30 bands. Man, you ain't doing all that shit. She over here. That's why they say you should have never gave niggas money. Monet complaining about going to work. Monet, remember, Monet was just complaining. Mama, no one won't let me go to work. She was complaining about going to work and putting some hours, only for us to find out that she got a $30,000 mink. You ain't putting in no hours, Monet. Why do you have a $30,000 mink? Y'all ain't making no money. A $30,000 mink? For what? We ain't making no money. This is absurd. But that's Monet. And she like, huh, well, I got a, I got a regular coat for you. You know what I'm saying? Here goes a regular Regular bomber jacket that you can wear. Let's get on out of here. Let's finish up Monet's story. We can almost spent almost an hour on Monet. All right. So <laughs> they end up going to the bar. They in here singing. They prancing around. And they just having flashbacks. They talking about when they were younger, how they used to turn up to this song. You know what I mean? We ain't going to get into no singing tonight. But, you know, you know, I want to. But we got to speed it up. Unfortunately, Monet's story, we got a little long-winded on it. We on the clock. We got to finish the thing up. But Monet, there's never a happy moment with Monet. She's never going to smile. She's never going to give you that energy that you want. Now, I guess Janet's supposed to be like a little Christian or something. She ain't supposed to be drinking like that. <laughs> yeah, speaking of drinking, yeah, we need a. We need my boy Eric in here. I thought I'd see my dog Eric in here. Eric, if you ain't here, man, what up? But they having a little flashback and a little memory lane. And she's like, I know Diana was lying to me about something. And Janet points out a very valid point. Man, why wouldn't your kids lie to you? Everything you didn't put them through. Oh, what up, what up, what up, Eric? Everything you didn't put them kids through. Of course they're gonna lie to you, Monet. So most like I just don't know why. She like bartender, another one. Bartender, matter of fact, bartender, let me get one of them Remy's too. Salute. Mm. Ah. And basically, Janet is saying, man, you put them kids through a lot of bullshit, Monet. Let's continue on. 
Now we get to the infamous. I knew you was gonna let that nigga hit. Tariq, we raised you better than that, Diana. Uh, Jacoby, right now we're talking about Monet, and we're going to in 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 Ghost Book Two, the most dangerous place in Book Two is the Tejada dinner table. There's so many iconic moments here at this table. I knew you was going to let that nigga hit. Tariq, we raised you better than that, Diana. I ain't lie. You did. You lie. Zeke, it's not your birthday. That's your mom. There's so much shit that goes on at this table. It's so much shit that happens at this table. Now, this is a Janet going away. Kane just got back from Raw Dog and Noma. Ain't put no water, no soap on that thing. This is a nasty boy here. <laughs> this is a nasty nigga. But sometimes it'd be like in your early 20s, this is, I won't say it's acceptable, but it's acceptable. You know, you do your thing, you got to make some moves. But Cheers, Uncle G. You know, in your early 20s, you, you're you a little bit wilder, but you smell like sex in here. One of you niggas need to go take a shower. But anyway, let's get, let's continue on. So we at the dinner table, and this is where shit starts to go down again. Now, Tariq is at the school. Monet got this this damn, I don't know, what, what is this, duct tape on here? Oh, it's a phone cover. They sitting at the table, and this is Janice going away. Now, what did we hear Monet say? What is Monet's plan? Regardless of what we got going on, what was Monet's plan when they sat down at this table? Were y'all paying attention? What was the conversation before we get into the most exciting part? Stacy said, I dropped for no more. Hey, chill, Stacy. What was Monet's plan when they sat down at this table? Exactly. Hey, y'all, listen up. I'm going to start a business. And I want y'all to be not, not my employees, not my subordinates, not my kids, but my business partners. Now, Monet is talking about getting back in the dope game. Um, I don't care how you try to, um, like, you go into the bank, hey, I'm trying to start a business. Okay, what business do you have? I want to do the Tejada LLC. Okay, so what is the Tejada LLC going to be? A business. Okay, so you're starting a business, Tejada LLC, but what is the business? It's, it's just going to be a business. Monet is simple-minded. She's not talking about starting a business. She's talking about getting back in the dope game, but she's calling it a business. Like, a business is legitimate. You're trying to get in the dope game, Monet, and she wants the kids to come back and work for them. But the kids, Kane still got the scent of Noma on him. Drew proved his loyalty by getting the Obi the fuck up out of here. And they both like, nah, 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 we good. We gonna just work with Noma. We gonna continue to work with Noma. Well, Effie, not, oh shit, where the fuck am I going? Not Effie, Diana. Dirty Diana. Diana's talking about, nah, ma, I'm good. Ma, I'll hold you down. I'll hold you down. So Diana's talking about, nah, ma, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there with you. I'm, I'm good for it. So the two boys, they like, nah, they're going to work with Noma. Now, I'm definitely staying at Noma. This is steady income. Monet ain't got no product or nothing. But then, eh, 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 eh. And we're all sitting there like, damn, Monet, turn that vibrator off. Pause. You know what I mean? Who keeps... 
Do y'all keep y'all phone on? Do y'all keep y'all ringer on? Do y'all keep y'all phone on vibrate or you keep it on silent? My phone stays on silent. I hate hearing phones. My phone is on silent. If you call me and I don't, I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to hear it. If I'm on a live, send me a text message because if you send me a call, I'm not going to call you back. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to call you back. I'll send you a text message. I'm a big texter. I got unlimited text. Send me a text. Now, the phone is, mm, mm, and we sitting here talking about getting the family back together, right? Well, Diana agrees, and then Monet looks at this phone. And Monet's looking at the phone like, you know when you get that text, you know what I'm saying? You get that text. I'm reading the text message. Like, when I wake up in the morning, this is exactly how I read my text message in the morning. I got one good eye. I'm reading. I'm looking at the text message. I got you, DeMarcus. After I'm, I'm in story mode right now, DeMarcus. I got you after this, but I'm in story mode right now. Can't take no pauses. I'm looking at the text message. Monet's like, what? What the fuck? The fuck, Diana? Ma, what is it? What is it? The fuck did you do, Di? Ma, what are you talking about? I just went to school today. I'm not talking about today. What the fuck did you do, Di? Ma, what do you mean? I told you I was going to be in the business with you. We're going to do big things. We're going to make money. We're going to get this money, right, Ma? What the fuck did I just look at, Di? What are you, what are you talking about? And then Kane, Kane shows the phone. And we looking like, oh, nigga, it's the footage. It's the footage from the fucking ring camera. Diana talk about, tell Tommy that Monet Tahada is paying you a visit. Oh, the footage dropped. The foot is dropped. I said, oh, shit. I knew you was going to let that nigga in. Tariq, we raised you better than that, Diana. Diana, we raised you better than that. The footage is finally released. And niggas is looking around like, what the fuck is going on here? This dinner table is cursed. The Tejada family is fucking ruined. Even Kane looks like, wait a minute. You went and told fucking Kate Egan that you was Monet Tejada and told Tommy, here's the address to where the fuck Tasha St. Patrick is? Monet hopped up so quick. Man, Monet was about to put the balls on motherfucking Diana again. We already know that Monet then choked Diana out. What you should be doing is thanking me for bringing him home. I killed a man for that money, Diana. And I ain't tell you to do that. 
Did we did we forget this? Did we forget what Monet is capable of? Did we forget what Monet was capable of? Did you do that? Fucking reckless around here. You acting real fucking reckless around here, Diana. Did you forget what Monet would do to your ass for bullshitting? Do you that, did Diana forget what the fuck Monet is capable of? Monet jumped up so quick they had to grab Monet. Monet was about to catch a body. We weren't just gonna have Obi. We was about to have Diana motherfucker Tejada and Lorenzo Jr. the third or fourth or fifth, uh Talim. Uh, Salik, whatever you want to call this baby, and Diana was about to be unalive tonight. Monet hopped up. Listen, one thing about Monet, we may say that she ain't really like that when it comes to like shooting and shit, but when it comes to attacking, I know. All right, first of all, we're in the power universe, this ain't real life, so we could joke around about this domestic violence, but it's nothing funny about domestic violence, especially like parents beating no kids or anything. But in this instance, in the power universe, Diana deserves an ass whooping. She tried to set up Monet and get Monet killed. We seen Monet. They said that Monet improvised. That right there was just off the top of the dome when she jumped over the table. Remember when Diana was exposing her for about the Dante shit? They said they didn't script that. Monet jumped over the table. So when we talking about Monet's acting, she's a little lacking. No, Monet, when you want Monet to turn the fuck up, Monet is a different animal. We might talk about Monet's acting when she's regular, but when you want Monet to put in some work and get on the motherfucker ass, Monet is number one. Look, look at this. Look at watch this choke. This ain't no play play choke. I'm pretty sure Diana was like, man, Monet, that's a little too serious. Look at this. Watch this shit. Listen to listen to listen to what Diana got to say and watch how Monet react. This ain't no play play. Monet is really like that. You to do that. Fucking reckless around here. You don't know who you fucking with, little girl. I got your husband out of jail and I'm fucking with you. Fucking with, little girl. Fucking do that. Fucking to do that. I didn't tell you to do. Look, look. This ain't no play play choke. This is the real deal. And watch when she chokes Diana, she goes, her. she gets to shaking her hands like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cut, 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 cut. Hey, Mary J, Mary J, this is just acting now. <laughs> you over here, like, you cutting off, like, <laughs> you cutting off real, like, she can't breathe. You cutting off, the, you cutting off circulation. Look, watch how Monet, Monet ain't playing around with your ass. And then this is a whole different situation. This choke, was only because Monet put money out and got someone knocked off. Diana told me I ain't tell you to do that. This situation is completely different from this scene that we're watching here because Diana tried to get Monet killed. Watch this. Watch the little jiggle at the end. Watch. When the camera turns, watch the little jiggle for Monet. I ain't tell you to do that. Fucking fucking right now, watch, watch, watch. I don't know who you fucking with. Look at that, look at that. This is real deal. Monet ain't playing around. We everybody everybody talk about oh Monet, she like it. Yeah, okay. Let Monet choke your ass out and see how it is. So it turns out Diana and Drew were in this together because Drew was talking about Diana. No, 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 chill, 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 chill. Well, remember last week Monet heard. Diana telling Drew in the kitchen, we're better than Monet when they were about to do the pills. Remember, Drew was the one that's trying to get rid of Monet. Diana actually had a change of heart because her hormones are jumping like a disco. Shout out to Missy Elliott because she's pregnant at the moment. So now the Tejada family is all kinds of fucked up. I said, oh, we got some action. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. My name is Mo J. We do this each and every week. We're going to try to do this at 9 p.m. Eastern each and every week. Try to finish off the season. But let's get back to the story. Drew. He gets exposed because he's protected Diana, and we know that they like this because in the flashback, him and Diana been sacking up dope since 1992 because Monet, she was in over her head, and she decided to put the kids in the game. So at this point, all hell breaks loose. The dinner table is the dangerous spot in the world. If you ever have a chance to have dinner with the Tejadas, have dinner in a public space. 
never go to their house. Remember the first time Tariq came over? There was a whole party for Zeke or whatever, or it may have been for Kane. I can't even remember. But when Tariq went over there, all hell was breaking loose. This dinner table is a fucking curse for the Tejada family. And I'm like, man, I love this shit. This is what we're expecting from power. Every week, we want explosive. Diana and Drew run up out the house. Now, Kane is looking at it like, wait a minute. This is Monet's story. Mo's supposed to be telling it from Mo's perspective. But Mo, she was about to, ooh. I, uh. Mo wanted to put them hands on somebody. Ooh, yeah, brother. Ooh, yeah. I want to talk a nigga out. You think you know what you're doing, Diana. You set me up. You and Drew. Both of you go, Drew, you knew about this too. Ooh, yeah, brother, yeah. Monet wants blood. And now Kane is looking like, wait a minute. Y'all told me Tariq didn't do it. It was you two niggas that tried to set up my? Fuck that. You niggas got to pay. So these niggas run up out the house. Monet's in the house. Ah, ah. This nigga Kane get the This nigga running up out the house. He about that action. But he don't get to shooting because we know that Kane, when he was a baby, he had PTSD because whenever he gets around guns, sometimes he shoots, but sometimes he freezes up because we know he was crying like a little bitch when he was in the car seat and they put the gun up on him. So he chases Diana and Drew about the house, but there ain't no shooting going on. He's like, why? Why did my brother just do this? Why? They've been going at it this whole time. I got a video on the channel. Go watch it. Drew versus Kane. Kane versus Abel. I was one of the first people to ever put that shit out there, you know, because that's what I do. But now Monet's in the house, and Monet's, ah, oh, these niggas tried to set me up. I knew I should have choked Diana's ass out. So now the Tejada family is done. It's a civil war. It's a line drawn down the middle. You got to choose your side. You with Monet and Kane and Noma, or are you with the goddamn non-dynamic duo Drew and Diana? This shit is where it needs to be. Salute to power. You guys are doing your thing. This is what the fuck we want to see. This is the god darn finale, man. We ain't trying to bullshit. We ain't trying to be in the fight club. We won't see none of that shit. We want to see action. We want to see action. We want to see bodies. We want to see bodies. We want to see a little bit of you know, a little bit of love baking but other than that we want to see action action bodies bodies we want to see niggas getting fucked up in the game we want to start exposing niggas we want all the smoke this is ghost this is on the clock episode three 6 30 in the morning 6 45 6 48 in the morning for me we on that yak we're done with monet's story we just getting started Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Because don't nobody break a showdown like Mo break a showdown. Because Mo break a showdown how a show's supposed to be broken down. This is on the clock. We are off the clock with Monet. What we on? What we on? Don't nobody do it like Mo. Don't nobody. I'm, man, I'm up at 7 o'clock in the motherfucking morning doing this for y'all, man. On that yiggity yak. Don't talk back. Shout out to my shout out to my girl Erica Vane. Erica Vane be plugging your boy. Pause. <laughs> Erica Vane, that's my girl, man. Erica Vane, she hit me up. It's about.